Hi friends, uh, welcome back to Coffee with Ravi. Uh, thank you for all of you that have encouraged me to kind of shed my inertia and get back at doing this because I do know that this material is being used and you're thinking about it and that's really the intent is for you to keep thinking about it so you can use it for your own health or for the health of your own uh, friends and loved ones. Today I, talked about, I wanted to talk about two liver diseases which are rather specific but I wanted to talk about the broad general principles about how we think about these liver diseases so that you get a little bit more about that because the diseases themselves are a little specific. What I wanted to talk about were two diseases called primary biliary cholangitis and primary sclerosing cholangitis. These are two diseases that affect the liver. The liver is an organ as you can see on the slide that sits in the right upper quadrant. It has two drainage ducts that drain out and join with a duct coming out of the gallbladder and that duct is called common bile duct. That then comes out into the uh, first portion of the bowel uh, called the duodenum. Now these are diseases that I'm talking about the primary biliary cholangitis and primary sclerosing cholangitis also known as PBC and PSC affect both the bile duct of the outside as well as the bile ducts inside. So the, the first, in, in primary biliary cholangitis, it's a disease that's affecting the small ducts inside the liver. Whereas on this slide that I'm showing, this is a disease that the primary sclerosing cholangitis affects both the bile ducts on the outside as well as the inside of the liver or a mixture. Primary biliary cholangitis is a condition that predominantly affects women uh, by a ratio of 9 is to 1. What's happening here is that the immune system of the body, the immune system that normally resides in the blood and bone marrow, turns against the liver because of a combination of being genetically prone and something outside us, something in the air, something in the food, something in the environment, some infection, something triggers that in conjunction with having the genetic susceptibility and a combination of this causes the immune system to start irritating the small bile ducts in the liver. So if you think about the bile ducts in the liver, you can think about it as a fine network of drainage pipes that becomes bigger and bigger as they come out, as I showed you on that slide. And it's the small ducts that are getting affected. And what's happening is that those bile ducts, because of irritation, are then shutting off. So think about the drainage sink. If you think about a kitchen sink, if you think about the inside of the kitchen sink, the smaller drainage pipes there, slowly getting or vanishing, that's what's happening in primary biliary cholangitis. It's a disease that affects women, we don't know why clearly. Uh, there may be some hormonal influences and typically in the early stages all you're seeing is a liver test called alkaline phosphatase in the blood that starts going up. As the liver disease progresses, people start getting fatigue, itching can be a sign, some discomfort in the belly, and in late stages, they can be yellow jaundice. But that's the progression. So if you're looking at your blood chemistry panel, um, and I think everybody should get a blood chemistry panel at some point, there's a test called alkaline phosphatase, and that goes up in this condition. There's a antibody test or a blood test called AMA, which then confirms that. Sometimes we do a scan called a fibro scan. It's like an ultrasound type scan that tells us if there's any damage and that picks up this damage that I'm talking about in the liver. So a combination of these blood tests and this fibro scan can help diagnose it and typically we need to do a liver biopsy. Why is this important? In the prog if progression happens, the liver can shut down and you can get jaundice, bleeding in the esophagus, fluid on the belly, lots of itching and you are trying to catch it before it gets to that point. The second aspect of it is that what we're trying to do is try to give medications that prevent this or slow it down rather. The, and the, the medication that's available for PBC is a medication called Ursodiol. Many times that slows things down. In people who have this bile duct diseases in general, Vitamin D absorption or fat soluble vitamins which are A, D, E and K can slow down. Sometimes because of vitamin D deficiency and uh, the calcium absorption goes down and you can get thin bones. 
itching can be a problem and sleeplessness from that can be a problem. So any itching that's persistent, that's beyond dry skin, I think needs to be uh, evaluated thoroughly. But these are complications that can happen with these kind of diseases that affect the bile ducts and the liver, uh, which is uh, what I just, the end stage complications I talked about and the vitamin deficiencies as well as the bone problems that can develop are ones that need to be kept in mind. On the other hand, primary sclerosing cholangitis, the problem is that the bile ducts are both the outside and inside start getting affected and they start forming blockages. So the bile is not draining out right, people can develop infections. And the interesting thing about this is that the great majority of people who have primary sclerosing cholangitis have a condition called ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease associated with it. Ulcerative colitis is an inflammation, an immune-driven inflammation of the colon. Crohn's disease can be of the colon or small bowel. Primary sclerosing cholangitis is present uh, associated with inflammatory bowel disease or ulcerative colitis or Crohn's in the vast majority of cases, about 80 to 90 percent of the time. That too is a progressive illness and even if you can then diagnose ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease and get controlled, sometimes the liver disease can continue to progress, occasionally all the way to requiring a transplant. Two things that have to be remembered with primary sclerosing cholangitis in particular is that liver du bile duct cancer can develop, bile duct obstruction can develop, and sometimes we have to go down with a camera and there's a test called ERCP that we can get there with the camera, open up the bile ducts, brush it, put a stent in, etc. So those are things to remember about primary sclerosing cholangitis and things to remember about primary biliary cholangitis. So in a sense, if there's itching, if there's a blood test abnormality, if one has inflammatory bowel disease, one needs to keep an eye on the liver tests, one needs to keep an eye on for vitamin deficiencies as well as bone related issues. So all of these problems can be prevented and progression of liver disease can be prevented. And that's what we do. I know this is a little bit more of a, a, a narrowed topic, but I thought I would put it out there because there are some of you that uh, have this and I think this is continued education for all of us. Thank you and I'll continue to try to do this every few weeks.